well, my dad wasn't too fond of me playing football. Right. Yeah. Um, it, def it definitely did. It knocked my confidence because um, up until then, in school, I was one of the better players. Yeah. So, right. Like, you just get cocky and arrogant and not even arrogant, but just too confident at yep. a young age. Yeah. So, in my head, when, when Sam Allardyce was putting his arm around me, I was in the bubble. I thought, yep. this is it. I'm going to be a first team player. So, when I was um, up in Rotherham by myself, away from friends and family, yep. um, I would say I did suffer a bit of depression. So, um, all the sacrifices that I made to become a professional, I do feel it has helped me to. And, whoa, well, this is the one. That's it. There you go. The main one. Um, ha! Just had it. Uh, so it's an absolute pleasure today to have ex-West Ham and current Dagenham and Redbridge defender Manny Onorise with us to share his secrets and sacrifices of his professional football journey so far. So Manny, welcome to the show. Um, before we start, so the listeners can get to know you a little bit better, um, we play a game of Would You Rather, uh, which my children ask 10 quick fire questions. Um, however, this week, my two boys uh, are busy playing football, so unfortunately, you're going to be stuck with me asking the questions. So, Manny, here we go. So, the first question, would you rather game or read a book? Oh, game. Game. Okay. Uh, would you rather score a hat trick and lose, or score or not score and win? Oh, not score and win. <laughs> uh, would you rather? Uh... Actually, it depends, but yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you rather have a takeaway or eat out? Oh, eat out. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, would you rather listen to Stormzy or Drake? <laughs> Drake. Drake. He's more diverse, Good. Yeah, he's got more, more going. <laughs> uh, next one. Uh, would you rather wear Nike or Adidas? Nike. Okay. Uh, would you rather own a Bugatti or a Lamborghini? Uh, Bugatti. Bugatti. Uh, would you rather do cardio or lift weights? Oh, lift weights. Lift oh, weights. <laughs> Okay, would you rather play Spider-Man or Incredible Hulk in a Marvel film? Ah, oh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Uh, <laughs> uh, next one. Would you rather have Prime Messi in your team or Prime Ronaldo in your team? Messi by a country mouth. Messi. <laughs> <laughs> Messi Ronaldo debate there. Uh, and last one. Uh, would you rather win the Premier League or win the Champions League? Champions League. Champions League. Good choices there. Good choices. Okay, so that'll allow the viewers just to get to know Manny a little bit better. Uh, but as you know, uh, the podcast is to shine a light on the secrets and sacrifices all families go through to allow their children to become elite level athletes. And that's something that's really close to our hearts at the moment with having four children currently on that journey. Um, so I'm always uh, fascinated to hear about um, the professional athletes uh, with regards to their upbringing and how their life was when they were younger and growing up at home. Um, so could you just take me back to your childhood and your earliest memories uh, of when you was living at home and, and where the story began for, for Manny? Um, began a long time ago, uh, I would say primary school. Um, I remember trialing for the primary school team for the year. Right. Pardon? Oh, no, I was just I was just saying, right, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Trialing for the team to play in the year above. I remember even getting put in goal just because I wasn't good enough to play outfield with the older lot. Right, but okay. I was happy with that just to be in amongst the older crowd and, and play with them. Um, but yeah, I just remember staying after school, primary school, always playing football in the park, uh, wherever okay. I can, being on the bench for the older teams, not even getting on, um, but just being part of it uh, from an early age. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably my earliest memory I remember of football. 
Okay. So did um, did did you play other sports at school, or was was it just football that you was mainly involved with? Honestly, mainly football. Right. Okay. In terms of other sports, yeah, not really. I was so obsessed with football. Like, right. Okay. Everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Play football you, before school. Do you have any uh, any siblings or any like older brothers or sisters that did did they used to play or were they sporty? So I have three older brothers. Okay. Uh, they, they all played, but not at a serious level, I would say. Okay. Um, my brother just above me is three, yeah, three years older. So okay. I used to try and play along with his age and just the age below. Okay. That's why I never really made a team, but I was just yep. in amongst it and in, in and around it. Right. Okay. And would would you say did you get your kind of football ability from like kind of your mom or your dad or where where did that kind of football inability come from or was it through playing with the older older boys like you've just kind of mentioned? Yeah, I think there's a combination. Like my dad played football as well when he was younger, obviously okay. at a serious level, and yep. um, my brothers played. And I think just the combination of being in the ranks in and around the older lot, yep. you, it increases your 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 skill and um, yeah like your knowledge of the game so yeah i just got in around them playing playing with them i was just so obsessed with it like my yeah. older brother was a diehard arsenal fan right so okay kind of just his love for football kind of rubbed off on me right okay I when arsenal would lose i just remember that he used to cry all the time when arsenal would lose and everything but yeah so i think possibly from my dad and yeah okay and, and, and throughout your kind of early career uh, was your parents kind of uh, giving you any like advice on say like nutrition and diet and like kind of uh, not having late nights for instance or going out with friends or how did how did that work in the in the early days is that something that you took on yourself or was you kind of guided by by your parents um i think unlike a lot of people my parent well my dad wasn't too fond of me playing football right okay yeah and um i never understood that when i was younger so right. Like all growing up, so I remember in primary school he was always just like, make sure you study, do your homework after school, uh, right. don't play football, and not don't play football, but don't waste your time on playing football. Okay. Study, study, study. And even yep. when I got to secondary school, I remember him coming into my secondary school saying to my teacher, um, "Why is why is he in a, a school football team? I don't want him to play in a school football team. Like get him out of the school football team." And then I'm just there at home, or in the office crying. I remember I was crying in the office saying to my teacher like. I want to play my dad's just like no you need to study you need to do your work and everything um but back then i just used to think oh like why doesn't he want me to play football like i love football why does he hate football so much but it's only now growing up and like understanding yep. i wish i have a little one on myself your parents yep. want the best for you yeah and yeah in his upbringing football isn't security yeah because there's so much uncertainty so like he grew up understanding you need to work go to i mean uh, study, go to university, get a good education, get yep. a job and look after your family. Yep. And that's how it was taught. So he thinks that's, so for him to show love to me, he needs to guide me in yep. the, the right route that he thinks is best, which is go to uni, get a good job and look after your family. Okay. So he was trying to force that on me from a young age. Yep. Do your homework, do your work, don't play football. But I didn't understand it. I was just, <laughs> <laughs> if, if anything, I love football so much. I was so obsessed with it. It wanted me to play football even more. But that right, was like okay. one of like my biggest, or like a lot of people, I, I get told stories. Oh, my dad used to take me to football and he used to watch me play. And I never got none of that. Right, okay. I, I was on the other side. So I remember like after that meeting in school, yep. um, I used to get home late after school. My dad was just like, where have you been? It used to be football training, but now I'm not allowed to go football training. He right. used to be, oh, I was at school doing um, extra work. I was doing my homework. I was after school club. So like I had to, and then my mum had to cover for me sometimes because she was right. the only one like saying, okay, like I understand you love football, but you need to understand this is why your dad wants you to do it. Yeah, Before yeah. You need to play football. You need to make sure you're on form in school. So you need to be getting the good grades. Yep. If your grades start to slip, the school's going to call your dad and yep. let him know. And then he's going to find out you're playing football. Right, so, okay. My whole motivation to play football was I need to be on work and I need to be on top form in school. Yeah, so I used to yeah. Stay back certain times, go to the library after school, do extra okay. work. Yeah. So I've got I've gone on I've gone on the tangent, but um <laughs> if I if I roll rewind a bit, um the question you asked, uh yeah, I did take it upon myself. Okay. Um, yeah. Because my dad didn't wasn't fond of me to start off with. 
yeah. playing football. All right, okay. Because, as I said, growing up now, I now understand why he didn't. Yeah, um, yeah. Because of the security aspect. And as, yeah. as we know, a lot of footballers don't make it. Only about 1% make it professional. So yeah, I was thinking about... Um, security and the family yeah right all right okay so so i read i mean you correct me if you're wrong i mean you you started your kind of professional journey at uh, i think your first trial was at west ham wasn't it yeah. um and then um obviously things um wasn't successful the first time around at west ham and then uh, you actually got signed for millwall i think it was and then you went um you went back to west ham where you signed as a as a 12 year old um and then you went on to make your first team squad debut in uh, against Arsenal on the 14th of March, I think it was, in 2015. And then not so long after, you signed your first professional contract uh, with them, which must have been a massive like kind of achievement and something that you was really, really proud of. Um, but then you did you elected to kind of leave in the in the January in 2016. Uh, it was so. I think this is a, a two part kind of question for you, really. Um, so, can you just first explain how you felt when you when you first um, didn't get signed for West Ham and how you was kind of feeling at the time and did that kind of affect your confidence for a while and and how was the process um, like kind of explained to you uh, from that? Yeah, um, it definitely it definitely did. It knocked my confidence because um, up until then, in school, I was one of the better players so right okay always been one of the best players in, in the year group and in and around um, okay age. so when i went to west ham and they were like like um similar level to me right. it was like, wow like in my head i thought i was one of the best in my age in the okay. country and that's just what you as a kid you just think these yeah. things automatically so when i got knocked back it was like whoa like this is unexpected i was even to a point where was telling people, oh, I'm going to play for West Ham, like before oh. I've even signed. Yeah. So, yeah. Like you just get cocky and arrogant and not even arrogant, but just too confident at yep. a young age. And then I got told, um, yeah, you're just not ready. Um, go back to your, they scout me from my county team. I was playing okay. for London County back then. Um, and they said, uh, maybe we'll reconsider at a later stage. Okay. Um, yeah, it did not my confidence. I did start to think, oh, am I as, good as I thought I was. Yeah, yeah. Um, what age were you then, Manny? Twelve. Twelve? Yeah. Right, okay. So I only ask because uh, we have two boys that play football. Uh, one's 10, one's 11 now. However, my youngest boy, uh, he was on trial at a club for, for about four weeks. He got a trial for. Uh, and unfortunately, it came to the end of the four weeks and he got pulled to one side. Uh, and they were really nice and sympathetic and supportive. Um, however, they said for him, they wanted him to focus on a few different kind of elements and then they'd kind of come back and, and have a look again at him. Um, however, I, I just remember, and it wasn't so long ago really, it was just before, just before Christmas, um, all the way home, he was in tears um, because it was just something that he really wants to do. He just kind of sees himself just kind of playing football and, he almost kind of had that dream taken away from him. Um, so, I mean, he was, it probably took him a couple of weeks to, to almost kind of get over it. And similar to yourself, he, he was just thinking he was good enough and he'd be playing with like kind of his friends, uh, he'd be playing in the garden and, and he knows he's quite kind of good. But then I think this almost kind of knocked him back a little bit to, again, like how you was um, thinking, am I as good as what I thought I was? So. I think the I think the process of it is quite kind of tough for the footballers, and I don't think anything kind of prepares you for that um, when you when you're kind of doing your trial and you you kind of getting your uh, your feedback um, at the end, whether it's a, a positive um, or a, or a negative, really. Um, so, the second part of the question: um, Can you just explain your decision uh, to why you left West Ham in the in the January? Uh, and was this a was this a hard kind of decision to make? Um, and was was this due to like kind of injuries or other kind of sacrifices? Um, so honestly speaking, it was a combination of a few things. Okay. Um, so before, as you, as you mentioned before, then I was I got on the bench for the first team. Yeah, yeah. Professional contract. So just uh, the summer before that, I was in and around the first team every day. So yeah. I went from. 
like getting called up to the first team training ground. Oh, Manny, you're training with the first team today. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, I'm yeah. To the first team training ground from the um, 18s and you're training with yep. the first team. And to a step, to a um, point where they just said, you know what, you're here with us for the rest of the season. So like, I was turning up at the training ground every day, and I yep. was just excited. And um, in the summer, I got uh, what is it called? I was part of the first team squad. Right. In wow. Camp in in Ireland. Yeah. So in my head, when when Sam Allardyce was putting his arm around me, I was in a bubble. I thought, yep. this is it. I'm going to be a first team player. Like, looking back, when I reflect on, on so many things then, I was in the academy bubble and I just thought, yeah, you go 18s, 21s, first team, and you become a Premier League player in the first team and you play. And I thought, this is it. Like, yeah. Sam Allardyce likes me. He's, he's making me travel with the first team, even if I'm not in the squad. So I, I, was, in the, I was on the bench for Arsenal, travelled to Norwich. Or is it Aston Villa? One of them. I was in the squad for Aston Villa. Okay. wasn't on the bench, but just in and around it. And he just yeah, kept yeah, bringing yeah. me along. So I just thought, yeah, I've cracked it. I'm in the... Yeah. I got put for the first team. And then he got sacked. Right, okay. So that, that summer, he kept them up. But then Sam is sat now. A new uh, person's coming, Slavin Bilic. Right, and okay. He's all really nice. Um, yep. So because he's a new manager, I'm technically still a 21 player. I'm not a first team player. Yep. Because um, from 18, you go to 21s and then first team. Even though some of that's elevated me, yep. the first team, I'm still a 21s player. Just okay. the first team. Yep. So then I've been put back to 21s now. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I've just been with the first team. Like, I'm a first team player. Like, I'm in and around the first team. So I'm training. I'm now, I'm, tra- I'm still training with the first team because I'm doing well. Okay. Playing games with the 21s. Training with the first and playing games. And then I got, it got to the January window and Brentford came sniffing. Yep. And they were like, look, Manny, um, you, we want to put you in a first team setup. And we've uh, projected, we've done analysis. The Brentford are very big on stats. Right, okay. Uh, I went and trained with them for a week. And they said, we really like you. Um, we want to give you something longer, a two-year contract, whatever it is. We want you to be a first team player. Okay. Want, well, not be a first team player. We want to be a young player, but in, in the round of first team. We projected for you to play eight games at the end of the season. Yep. Um, this is in January. We put you in a nice apartment, like all these, like a very good deal. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm in around the first team. That's all I've ever wanted, didn't it? To yeah, be class yeah. first team. So I'm chasing that that whole first team status. And then I thought, yeah. So go to Brentford, and he goes, yeah. You play eight games in the Championship. You're 19. You back up to the Prem. That's that's literally quote unquote what he said to me. Yeah, or what my agent and and everyone was saying. So I just thought, yeah, like it's a no brainer. Why would I stay yeah. with the twenty ones and yeah, not really push into the first team when I'm getting told I'm going to be in amongst the first team at Brentford. Okay. So um, I made the decision to move to Brentford in that January. Right. Okay. That was the reason why. And then is that far? Did so? Did you um, stay down in Brentford? Then was you? Is that close to where where you was? Did you say you 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 got an apartment there? And then yeah, you had so, to kind of move, move kind of home. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. how was, how was that for you kind of moving away? Cause I know we had, uh, so we had Reese Brown, um, on, um, a couple of shows ago. And one of the things he really struggled with, uh, and what he kind of says is he, he was a bit of a homeboy. Uh, he loved being at home. Uh, he didn't like kind of traveling away, uh, to a point, even when he was um, playing for Coventry. Uh, which was two hours away from his kind of family home. He'd do a, a four-hour like round trip because he didn't like staying away. Um, he couldn't um, make that kind of break almost from from like kind of the family home. So is is that a bit of a sacrifice that you kind of had to make to kind of move away? And is that something that you wanted to kind of take to kind of further your career? And honestly speaking, I was excited about it. Right. Okay. I was I was nineteen. Um, so I lived in Crystal Palace at the time, South London, South East London, and Brentford is in West London. So okay. it's distance wise, it's actually not far. But if you know about living in London, well, you're yeah. from Manchester, which is still a big city. Yeah, it's um, it's it's traffic is mayhem. Right. Trying to get from south to west or from it's crazy. So okay. it would have been like a hour and a half trip right. over. Yeah. Um, so they said to me, look, they put you in an apartment. So I wasn't far away from home. I was still local to home on the train, but it was just easier for me to get to training. So I was 10 minutes from the training ground in okay. West London and I loved it because right. I had my own own apartment at 19 years old, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. 
yeah so i had my own freedom everything and it was just i was excited right okay so all right London, yeah. okay so from so from there then um i'd read that you you've probably been linked with say about eight other do you know like kind of different teams before settling at uh dagenham and redbridge uh now which uh which were a national league team um, in the English football pyramids. Um, how how do you kind of cope with the the roller coaster of emotions from going from like kind of do you know kind of team to team? So, like you've mentioned, you was you was at Brentford. You'd you kind of got an apartment, and you kind of close to to that kind of that dream. How, how do you kind of cope with the the kind of ups and downs um, that you kind of experienced throughout? throughout all the journeys uh, and experiences that you've had honestly it's been hard harder than i thought um, okay I the hardest was when i moved up to rotherham right okay 20 i think so a year later after brentford okay rotherham, that was the hardest because I, I was actually away from home then so right okay up, yeah up north and um the worst part being away from home was not playing Right. Okay. So when you're away from home and you're playing football, like football's going well. Whenever football's going well, you feel on top yep. of the world. Like, yeah, yeah. Everything's perfect. Like everything's good. When when you're not playing and football's not going well, yeah, you want the ground to swallow you up. You you start questioning everything, like emotionally, yep. everything. You think, am I even good enough? Like, why am I, why am I not playing and yep. etc. Et so, when I was um, up in Rotherham by myself, away from friends and family, yeah, um, I would say I did suffer a bit of depression. Um, right. Okay. Because before that, I went from playing at Brentford B, yeah, my first in Brentford B, and then to Cheltenham. I was playing a lot. I was yep. getting told, "You're this, you're very good." Signed a new contract at Brentford. When I got to Rotherham, and I didn't play. Manager, right, okay. Like, no, like it just weren't, it just weren't working out. It just weren't having me, or he didn't think yep. I was ready. He thought I was inexperienced. Which right, is okay. Um, so it really hit me bad like not being around any as much people so my girlfriend yep. used to travel up every weekend to kind of console me and yeah um, so i'm not by myself but i struggled a lot um okay uh, when i was in robin for, for a while really not my confidence down it made me question a lot and think am i even good enough like yeah 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 so that that was tough so is, is that where you have to really rely on, like, say, your friends and your family and, say, like, your your girlfriend to, to really kind of support you and pick you up? And are they the ones that always kind of, like, believe in you um, and, and they kind of help you uh, believe in yourself uh, and, and carry you on through the journey? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I agree. I think also, like, personal to me as well, I feel like religion, uh, my religion, like, being a Christian also helped me as well. Okay. Um, which is like my personal reflecting and basing my happiness on my religion, on my relationship with God. Yep. Who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow? Yep. Rather than on football, which was my God back then. Yeah. Like football was my, when football's going up, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm on top of the world. When football's down, I'm, oh, like, please don't yeah, talk. Yeah. I'm just isolate myself. Yep. So when I base it on something that's constant, which is my religion, it's always the same. It's the same Bible, it's the same word. Um, my happiness, that, that kind of helps me come out of that and not take an opinion because football is a game of opinions, right? Yeah, yeah. So when I was basing my happiness on someone else's opinion, the manager telling me you're good, you're not yep. good, you, you're good today, like, it's just, it's like that. But okay. when I base it on, like, God loves me regardless of my situation, yep. that kind of lifted me to make me feel like I'm, I am like valuable i am good and yeah it's yeah not, it's not um seeking approval from man it's seeking approval for something greater than man so yeah that also pers personal to me helped me for someone else it's obviously different but yeah yeah that situation that helped me massively so you, you kind of touched on like the the depression kind of element was it did you get any support from kind of the teams or did you mention that to anybody uh at the time or like you said was it was it something that you just dealt with like internally because um, I know mental health's becoming a bit more um, kind of it's a bit more prevalent in the in kind of the football world now, isn't it? People are a little bit more open to kind of expressing the kind of thoughts, the feelings, and what they're kind of going through. Whereas a while ago, it was something that was quite a macho kind of world to kind of be in, and people didn't want to kind of open up about their thoughts and feelings. Did you did you ever mention it to to anybody uh, at the time, or did you just try and? 
Sort it out yourself. I think, so the manager at Rotherham at the time, Paul Warren, he was very, very good. Okay. So regardless of if he played me or not, as a person, as a manager, yep. like, he was very, very good. So right, okay. I think he kind of got an ink, well, not an inkling, he knew. So he used to do this thing where um, he's big on family. So he would have like a, um, a meeting where you just have to pre present and speak about your family, talk about someone in your family or friend who's motivated you in life or who's yep. made you, um, yeah. So I spoke about my dad and right. the situation with my dad and everything. And yeah. but even like before then, players used to reach out to me. Obviously, I was one of the youngest in the squad. I was yeah. like 20 and like said to me, let's, let's go to the um, for Costa before training. Yeah, yeah. To discuss like how's things. And but I feel like that probably came from the manager. I was saying to them, look, like check up for Manny. Or, yeah. Um, yeah, because one time I, I went into, I used to come into training early every day. Well, most days and do extras. Right, okay. I was so upset. I said I was so obsessed with football. Right? Do extras all the time and then I would never get into the team. I was still yep. making the team. I would see centre backs who are experienced yep. make mistakes. Okay. And when I make mistakes, oh it's inexperienced. But I'm just like, Gaffer, they making the same mistakes I am. Yeah, I'm coming yeah. in early, I'm doing this and this. So I went into his office and I said, Look, Gaffer, like I'm I'm I don't know what more I can do. Like I'm doing extras, I'm doing everything. And he goes, I see you've hit a brick wall, Manny. I see like you've like lost motivation or and I said yeah like because I feel there's there's actually no point nothing I can do I will ever get into your team yeah he says like I think he from then he just knew that something was going on or um with me like mentally because you could yep. see I was it was wearing me down like, right I was, okay I was feeling very very down so he yep. just he's put he put his arm around me but he was always a people's person anyway right okay um, but he was quite uh, good without me saying gaffer I'm depressed or he probably didn't know I was depressed but he yep. knew like mentally it was taking a toll on me okay so would so would you say like like we say would you say kind of climbing the mountain is worth the view then so would you say the rewards of success that you've had in your kind of football career outweigh the sacrifices that you've kind of made along the way um, to where you are today yeah yeah, 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 I do. I, I, I will say so, yeah, because, um, like with football, as we know, if when you're successful with football, you can it enables you to look out, look after your friends and family around you, right? Okay, so, um, all them sacrifices that I made to become a professional, I do feel it has helped me to uh, create a, a stable family, well, somewhat stable family life, and help right. like my family around me. So, I do think it has okay. definitely, definitely been worth it. Um, would would you say that like your parents have made any sacrifices along the way for you so you could make it as a, a professional footballer? Because I know yeah. with us, um, like myself and my wife, we have four children. So we have one one that plays tennis. Uh, we have two that play football. Our youngest, she's only five, but she does a, a horse riding. Um, and we're constantly kind of juggling things uh, with regards to either paying for subs or paying for tennis or paying for horse riding. Um, so then there, there are kind of times where we can't go out um, or we can't go to like uh, a birthday party or go out with kind of friends because we can't really afford it because we're, we're trying to put the children kind of first with their, uh, with their sport. So do, do you think your parents, have, uh, have they ever done anything like that that you know or are aware of, do you think? Um, aware of, yeah. I feel like my mum like did make a massive sacrifice in terms of going again, well, going behind my dad's back. <laughs> that, is, that is quite, quite, yeah. quite deep. Because I would feel if my partner did the same to me going behind my back again, something that I was so strongly about yeah. for a, ma a, a long period of time, for several years, is only until probably my professional contract where my yeah. dad actually turned around and accepted it. Right, okay. That's, that's a long time. And then on the flip side, my dad made a massive sacrifice in dropping everything he's believed in. Yeah, yeah. And saying, look, I do agree with you, son. And yeah, you can yeah. And I'm now giving you my 100% back in. Yeah, this bless them. Ever since. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, which is, which is deep. Because imagine everything you stand for now, you've got four kids and you're sending them to football. And yep. all of a sudden... Uh, your kid, or some something is telling you sport is not the way, and yeah, you yeah. play sports and you should be against sports. You think like, no, I'm not. I believe in this. This is the yeah. right way. This is what I know. And so, for you to then come across that bridge and say, look, 
I was not, well, not that I was wrong, but I'm sorry for thinking that way or whatever it is. And I now yep. fully support you. I think that was, that was massive from him. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. So, so at the end of every show, um, we have a tradition and we ask all our guests if they have any famous uh, or favorite quotes uh, or philosophies they use on a daily basis. For instance, uh, we had Reese Brown on not so long ago. Uh, his was more about mindset uh, and the way that he approaches football to maintain a high level of performance. Uh, and it was to be um, as fit as possible, uh, to be as strong as possible uh, and to have the right mentality. Um, one that I use quite a lot with like my work uh, and my children is to focus on the process and not the outcome. Um, so I was just wondering if you had anything uh, similar that you kind of use um, that you could share with us. This is this is so bad because I have so many. And <laughs> I can't come to my head right now. When I leave, when I finish this, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I should have said this and I should have said that. I have so many that I, I literally live by every, every day because the reality of the situation is you don't want to do certain things certain days. So some days you wake yep. up and your body doesn't want to function or you're just tired. Yeah. To get yourself out of it. I always have a quote for certain things, but um one of the ones that I use quite often is if you wait well, if you wait for the perfect conditions, you'll never get nothing done. Right, okay. And well, this is the one. That's it. There you go. The main one. Um ha, just had it. You can't only work hard on the days you feel good. Yeah, yeah. Which is very, very important because yeah. everyone can be cheerful. Everyone can be like 10 out of 10 when your yep. body's feeling good, when you're injury yeah. free. But to still put in that same amount of effort on days yeah. where you don't want to work hard, on days where your body's hurting, on days where you don't feel like doing anything, separates the, the elite from yeah. like the mediocre. Yeah. So yeah. that is the most powerful one, I think, like to can't only work hard on the days you feel good. You know? Yeah, and, th and those are the ones, or, and those are the days where you feel more satisfied um, that you've actually kind of got through it as well. You feel a bit more proud with yourself as well, don't you? Yeah. Um, that you kind of push yourself just a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I really like that saying. I like, uh, I like that one. Um, so what's next for, what's next for Manny? Um, I know you're involved in a, a couple of other ventures. Um, I know you've got a, a property company. Uh, so we're just wondering if you'd uh, like to go into any details about what the future holds for, for Manny. Um, future holds. So I have set up a, a property company to help educate like-minded, well, not just young footballers, actually, like just young people. So especially people living in cities. Okay. So like I've been fortunate enough to move up north in uh, smaller areas where it's cheaper to get on the property ladder. Right, so okay. growing up, I, um, living in London, I thought it was almost impossible to get on <laughs> <get> the properties. <laughs> yeah. London prices are so expensive. So um, I just really wanted to educate and show people that it is possible to get on the property ladder and yep. that you don't need as much as you think you need. So, yep. um, okay. Just, yeah, giving skills and trying to enable people to go into the property ladder through different ways. Ah, right. Okay. Very good. Very good. So, Manny, thank you so, so much for being a guest on Elite Children, a family pot, uh, portrait. Uh, I'm sure the listeners can definitely see they're not alone on their journey having it, an elite child. Uh, and by sharing these stories, we hope we can shine the light on the secrets and sacrifices all athletes go through and one that's definitely not an easy journey. Uh, and I'm sure with your hunger, your desire, determination and resilience that you've shared with us today through the stories uh, that you've highlighted um, and throughout your career. I'm sure any project I'll venture in your future footballing career will be uh, a huge, huge success. Uh, so Mane, Mane Honorise, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.